Peter would have loved today. He loved being outside, and so being here now makes me feel more connected to him. This is Peter's story. Peter was a kind, generous, and caring person. He was devoted to me and our family. We were married August 22, 1980. Together we have four children, Jeanette, Ed, Greg, and Beth, and nine grandchildren, Katerina, Olivia, Ava, Ariana, Joe, Michaela, Landon, Brody, and Amelia. We love spending time together, camping, family dinners, Packer games, and church. I loved listening to Peter sing in the church choir. Peter's diagnosis occurred on a weekend early in June of 2016. He had worked a normal shift on Thursday, and that weekend he began having problems with balance, vision, and some motor skills. I took him into the doctor for some testing, and by Monday he was officially diagnosed with stage 4 cancer of the meninges. Cancer of the meninges is cancer that surrounds the brain, does not enter the brain or invade the brain. And in Peter's case, it had traveled from his esophagus or the swallowing tube into those surrounding areas um, around the brain. And we had tried several different things, including radiation as well as chemotherapy. Unfortunately, in Peter's case, the tumor was too advanced and we had recommended hospice. Everything happened so quickly. It was hard for me to process in that moment what was happening, but within a week, he was bedridden and wheelchair bound. We continued with the chemotherapy treatment plan for a few weeks until Peter made the choice to end treatment. His condition was worsening and he chose to spend his remaining days with his family at home. When we met the nurses and caseworkers, I was immediately greeted with warmth and compassion. When they were needed, they came quickly, always explaining changes in Peter's condition. Judy, the hospice aide, struck up a special rapport with Peter, and it was ultimately Judy that helped make Peter's final wishes to attend his daughter's wedding come true. Peter and Kathy were more than patients to me. They became my friends. The essence of my job is not to cure, but to provide care, comfort, and compassion. At the Burns home, they made me feel like family, which made it easy to extend love and comfort to both of them during Peter's journey. Beth, our youngest daughter, was to be married in April of 2017. However, after the quick diagnosis and learning of her father's ultimate prognosis, she moved the wedding to August 26, 2016. She was to be married at Church of Our Savior Lutheran Church. Peter was thrilled that her wedding would be held in a church and that he could attend. Peter decided he wanted to surprise Beth by singing the song Evergreen at their wedding. He was weak, so I suggested that our 12-year-old granddaughter Olivia sing with him. As the wedding approached, the doctor told our family they didn't think Peter was going to make it to the wedding. Having the ability to make this come true for Peter was rewarding for me and was a testament to his will. His attendance that day was something that cancer couldn't take from him. The legacy that Peter leaves behind is his family, and the hospice team became an extension of our family. The love and compassion that they surrounded us with during the most difficult time in our lives is something I will cherish forever. His legacy is one that I want people to know. I never want to stop talking about him. He was and is my entire life. I miss Peter every day, all day.